Yes. That's, that's wonderful. My name's Jeremy. Um, for those who uh, don't know me, Jeremy Rice, I'm like Fried Rice. I'm the, um, the hospital chaplain at the regional, and um, it's my privilege and honor to be uh, 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 the, the officiating, leading at, at, at Helen's service. Welcome to the cathedral. Let me pray. Loving God, you alone are the source of life. May your life-giving spirit flow through us. Grant us your compassion, one for another. In our sorrow, give us the calm of your peace. Kindle our hope. And let our grief give way to joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So, my, my condolences to um, all of Helen's uh, family uh, here and um, uh, uh, overseas or other parts of Australia. And uh, so Chris and then, then, then Keith, um, now Janet, Jan, yeah, Jan, Janet and uh, Hilary and, uh, and Dave, David and Annabelle. Lovely to see you. So um, uh, Helen, as you know better than I, but it was a privilege to know Helen, a uh, lovely Christian woman. Uh, great faith and great courage in the face of a huge trial. Um, so I invite you now, if, if you are able to stand and sing one of um, seven wonderful hymns that were especially chosen by Helen for this service. And our first one, uh, as you have there in the order of service, uh, beautiful order of service uh, booklets, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty. Who believe in him 
will rise again with him and that we are united with them in him. A couple of sentences from scripture. St. Paul writes, I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so Paul prays that you may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Our second hymn, Bless the Lord, O my soul, worship his holy name. Again, if you're able, please stand. <coughs> that there is eternal life on offer, 
and a paradise of no pain and no tears, then why wouldn't you gamble on being on that train to glory? Helen was firm in her faith to the end, but a few weeks ago had some anxiety about the process of actually leaving us. Even Jesus asked why, in his last moments, God had forsaken him. But Helen was firm that God had not forsaken her. She was born in 1951 in Broken Hill, where Bill, her father, was an accountant on the South Mine, and her mother, Doris, was a school teacher and librarian. Broken Hill in the 1950s obviously was a harsh mining town with an unforgiving climate, and Helen had mining in her blood from the start. It was here that she first came across Sturt's Desert Bee, a flower that shaped our lives, and there's some on the casket here this morning, courtesy of our next door neighbours. I had my 21st birthday in Karatha and marvelled at this flower and its tenacity and its ability to survive in the harshest conditions. Sturt's Desert Bee was hand painted on our wedding invitations by my sister Bunny. There's an old bush saying that if you pick the Desert Bee, you'll never leave the outback. It certainly has hauled us back time and again into the red dust country. Ella moved to Yarrawonga at a young age with her sister Alison, six years younger than her. Alison has flowered well and grown into a great musician, artist and architect, and she and Helen were always close. Alison is a great friend as well as my sister-in-law. Helen studied maths and science at Yarrawonga High School and was heavily involved in girl guides and adventurers as her mum was a guide leader. And Helen went on to complete a Bachelor of Science Education at the University of Melbourne in 1972. I courted Helen since she was about 15 years old and through university. I had a 10 year old 1963 Morris Elite. Every Friday afternoon I used to head out from Sydney University to Melbourne on the Hume Highway, chasing the, the heavy trucks that also did the night run. The old Morris had a top speed of 70 miles an hour and most days that's the speed the trucks travelled at as well. There's nothing quite as frightening as looking in your rear vision mirror seeing a license plate going up and down in the front of a Kenworth. Quite, quite spectacular. Helen worked as a chemist in the university holidays at the Mulwather Explosives Factory. She signed the Official Secrets Act and at this day she never divulged to me exactly what she did there. I suppose that if she did tell me she'd have to kill me so I stopped asking. <laughs> Helen was posted to Tolinga in Northern Victoria on graduation and we were married a year later when I graduated. I used the marriage as leverage with the New South Wales Department of Education to get a posting to Albury High School so it could be as close to Tulanga as possible. Our first child, Keith, was born at Tulanga Hospital in Victoria. Three years later, Helen was pregnant with Hillary when I was offered a posting to Mount Isa as an underground geologist in the mine there. I argued with MIM about waiting until Hillary was born before moving up, but they needed me to start immediately, so I agreed. Provided I could get back to Hillary, no, sorry, back to Albury for Hillary's birth. I'd missed the birth of Keith and Helen, I think, never quite forgave me for that. No, I didn't get there in time. MIM grudg grudgingly agreed, but said I'd have to pay my own travel costs and take unpaid leave. When the panic call came, I rushed into the chief geologist and said, Gotta go, baby's on the way. He said, Relax, sit down. You work for MIM. He picks up the phone and he rings Qantas and he says, you know those four seats that I always hold on every flight out of Mount Isa? I want one for Mr. Townsend. They booked a flight to Sydney for me, organised the regional air charter to Warbury, a car at the airport to pick me up and take me to the hospital. And all that at full pay had no cost to me. When I got back, I said to the chief geologist, well, how come he said it was gonna, I'd have to pay my own expenses? Have to be done as on leave without pay. He said, oh, We just want to know how much you really wanted the job. <laughs> Never forgave him for that. <laughs> Our move to Mount Isa took us back into the red dust country. With Hillary was six weeks old, and our next two children were born there, so we have children born in three states New South Wales, Victoria, and Queensland. And if I'd got the job I applied for in 1982 at Temple Creek, we've had a kid born in four states because that's in the Northern Territory. Not to be, so David was born in Mount Isa as well. Helen had been a 
member of the Nursing Mothers Association in Albury and arriving in Mount Isa with a three-year-old and a six-week-old and no mother around, she quickly realised the need for young mums in mining town and towns to have access to help and advice. She formed a branch of the Nursing Mothers Association in Mount Isa and within three months we had 140 women members. They used to meet at our place. So I joined Apex to get out of the house and away from the street in multitude. And Jesus might have fed the 5,000, but he didn't change the number of nappies that I did. We left Mount Isa in 1984 and moved to Brisbane with BHP Minerals. We made good friends at St Faith's Church in Strathpine and Helen brought about my conversion to Christianity at St Faith's in conjunction with the Reverend Tom Hall and his wife Wendy. In 1987, we formed our own exploration mining consulting company. Helen was the <coughs> company secretary. I globe trotted around the world working in 26 different countries until 1998 while Helen stayed home, kept the company books and raised four children pretty much on her own. While also working part time as a laboratory assistant, supply teacher, teacher's aide and accountant while playing the organ at the church and being the church treasurer. So she, she's a remarkable woman. 1994, I went to Fiji as chief geologist on the Emperor Gold Mine while Helen stayed in Brisbane with the four children. This was a particularly difficult time for her because for five years I was fly in, fly out, six weeks in Fiji and nine days back in Brisbane. We did that for five years while Helen battled to raise four kids on her own. We managed to stay married, but I think that was more through Helen's good grace than by my efforts. We changed houses, we worshipped at uh, St Mark's of the Gap in Brisbane under the Venerable Ron Grundy. In 2001, she went back to university and completed a Bachelor of Commerce degree at the University of Queensland and became a Chartered Practicing Accountant and CPA. She was treasurer of several of the churches that we'd been in as we moved houses quite a bit. And uh, she was treasurer at St Mark's of the Gap in Brisbane, North Pine Anglican Church in Petrie and St Matthew's in Port Hillock. Built a house at Upper Kedron in Brisbane, then moved out to Anchorage and Dagra where we built another house when we worshipped at uh, St John the Baptist of Petrie. I ran morning prayer at the local Dabra Church, St Aidens. We made some wonderful and long-term friends at Strathpine, the Gap, Petrie and Dabra. I retired in 2016 and becoming a bit bored with life. One of our friends at Dabra suggested I look at a chaplaincy position at King Island with uh, BCA, which was Church A. They wanted an ordained priest, which I'm not, but while investigating the BCA website, I came across an advertisement for the operations manager of the Port Hedland Mission to Seafarers. <clears throat> God works in mysterious ways because having had my 21st birthday at Karapa, I never dreamed that I'd be back in the, in the pillar again in retirement. Must be the pull of Sturge Desert Bay, I think, or the, the red dust gets in your blood, one or, the, one or the other. Helen was the assistant accountant at the mission there for three years until she was diagnosed with motor neuron disease. You've seen the pictures of the atheist astronomer Stephen Hawkins, uh, all cramped up and paralysed, he had MMD for 50 years. It's a disease I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. We retired again when she became ill, settling in Geraldine, it's such a pretty spot, and the climate is pretty mild compared to the Pilgrim, so it's, it's a great spot to be. Helen's acceptance of the disease and her stoicism in handling the progressively debilitating symptoms were a testament to her strength and character and her faith. God is good and his plan is always good. Somewhere in all of this is God's good plan. Someday he's going to reveal it to me because I can't quite see it at the moment. I've had some harsh words to say to God about his plan but I'm pretty confident he'll still forgive me for it. Helen leaves the world a better place and I thank God for his gift to me of Helen. His blessing in giving us two years warning of her promotion to his side and I thank him for his mercy in taking her so gently when the time came. She made huge achievements and leaves her legacy of her children and grandchildren. Let's not mourn our loss. Let's celebrate Helen's life. Thank you. Well, that was just a wonderful. Can we put our hands together? This is so
is going to read the two Bible readings, which are here in the, the, the order of service. And uh, then immediately following the readings, um, the Reverend Dr. David Second um, is going to give the sermon. So I'll hand over to Marjorie and then David. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that for those who love God, Verse 18 of Romans chapter 8 says, For I consider the sufferings 
of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. Well, the words of Paul's, but we know he was appointed by the resurrected Lord Jesus as his apostle and agent. So Helen's experience of the glory of heaven now and the glory which is yet to come when Jesus returns and liberates the world from its slavery to death, all that will cause their sufferings to seem like But to be immersed in those sufferings, as she was, and as so many others are, is a different thing. <coughs> and isn't it a remarkable thing that through that she continued to believe in God? I spoke to a woman in hospital who'd given up on her. She'd been a church girl all her life. Now she had cancer. It wasn't fair. She told me she no longer believed. Well, I guess her confidence had rested on the belief that she'd always been a good girl and God owed her something. Helen's confidence rested on the fact that although she was a disqualified sinner, Jesus had died for her and God had forgiven her and adopted her as his child. Romans 8.33, those God called, he also justified. Again. Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus, the judge? He's the one who died for us. More than that, who was raised for us. Who is at the right hand of God. Who is interceding for us. But what about those sufferings? They're very real. The scriptures make it clear that we are all of us caught up in the sufferings of this present creation through which, and only through which, the promised new world will come. For the creation was subjected to futility, verse 20, not willingly, but by God, who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the glorious freedom children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves. We who have the first fruits of the Spirit groaning as we wait eagerly for adoption of sons, the redemption of our bodies. So Paul likens the sufferings of this world to birth pains. A woman has great suffering, but out of it comes something glorious, a newborn child. He also makes it clear that Christians are not exempt from the suffering, which um, seems fitting to me since we are to be the beneficiaries of the suffering. Christians enjoy the first fruits of the Spirit, not the fullness of salvation. Full healing, resurrection, the transformation of our bodies, that all of that is yet to come. And that's the content of our hope. But I think there was something more there that Helen wanted us to hear. And that is that even in suffering, we're not alone. And she was not alone. Verse 28, for those who are in Christ, all things work together for good. All things work together for good. Is that possible? Still, on Saturday day after day, the body refused to do what she wished. 
Why is she saying to herself? I found myself asking this. Why is she saying to herself, all things work together for good for those who love her and she loved I think she chose that we would hear those words. Well, they may have sounded like the whole world is somehow alive, purposefully doing good to God's chosen ones. It's not that, of course. It's God who is alive and controlling all things for the ultimate good of his children. Seems to me that every one of us is dealt a hand the cards are placed down. We only get to pick up a card at certain points in the game. Before we do, nobody but God knows what is on our card or on anyone else's card until it's turned over. And then we have to play with the card before us. Well, that is just to play well. And Helen played well. She knew. She knew that everything works for good for those who love God. And so she had joy, even in the midst of her helplessness. She also experienced how difficult it was to pray, but she knew that the mighty Spirit of God intercedes for the saints according to the will of God, that the Holy Spirit was praying with her and for her, and that God was here. So, in the light of all that, we listen to her prayer to us. We must continue for a while in our decaying bodies in this decaying world. May God grant you to be strengthened with power through His Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to understand with all the souls what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the tools of God. And so, dear friends, we come together to say goodbye to this, our sister Helen, who carried her faith in the Lord Jesus to the end, and conquered, as the scriptures say. In all this suffering, we are more than confidence through him who loves us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor demonic powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor any power, nor height, nor depth, nor emotion, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. I'm going to invite you now to, to sing again, uh, very appropriately, um, the hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Following the hymn, uh, we're going to have some uh, special videos and, um, of, uh, that the family have put together in honour of, uh, of, 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 of Helen, uh, their mum. And um, then following that, uh, the Reverend, uh, following the videos, there's two videos, the Reverend David Hilton is going to come and uh, offer prayers. David is a um, prison chaplain, but um, he was, is very, very involved in the Wednesday uh, 10 o'clock communion service, um, with which Helen and Chris attended when Helen was well enough. Let us stand to sing, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. <coughs>
Sister, I mourn. Helen Mary, sister, I mourn. Already six when I was born. She mothered me, so I'm told, a baby doll for her to hold. She sewed my dresses, pink bows, frills, flounces, and made me baskets carefully wove. She held my hand as we crossed the road and walked me home from school. I taunted her invoked mum's ire and watched as she was scold. Mum always said it took two to fight, but Helen never told. She studied physics, she studied chem, and she fitted in amongst all of them. She seemed so smart and wise, so cool, which raised the bar for me at school. Then to Melbourne off she went, all grown up and hell-bent, on college life with new friends, new freedoms and adventures. Come on down, come and stay, come out to tea, she invited me. She dressed me up, put on my lippy, and off we went, the ballet, the city. Then in time she finished study. To Langata High she taught. Not far from home, her sister she sought. Come on over, come and stay. Hockey is on, come and play. She married Chris, they had their brood, and their legacy is clear. A family strong, connected, near. A loving life ensued. Then nasty illness raised its head, forcing her to fight. She did her best and battled hard in prayer and faith and might. So now at peace, there is a quiet, a stillness that is born. Helen Mary within us lives. Sister, for you I mourn. Thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me, save that Thou art, Thou my best thought by day or by night, waking or sleeping, Thy prayer. My life Be thou my wisdom And thou my true word I ever with thee And thou with me, Lord Thou my great Father
need not nor man's empty praise. Thou mine inheritance, thou and always. Thou and thou only, the first in my heart. High King of heaven, my treasure thou Empty praise, 
Thou mine inheritance now and always Thou art Thou only the first in my heart High King of heaven, my treasure Thou art We continue our service with a time of prayer. Let us pray with confidence to God our Father, who raised Jesus Christ from the dead for the salvation of all. Thanks be to God for the gift of life. You have made us in your image, and you have called us to reflect your truth and light. We thank you today for the life of Helen. We give thanks for her, for her family life, for her children, her grandchildren, for her friends throughout the country. We give thanks for her contribution to churches throughout this country, for the communities in which they have lived. We thank you for her love of the red dust country that is our part of the world. We give you great thanks for her strength, courage and confidence that her personal faith brought about to give her that strength during times of adversity. We give you thanks for her faith, her hope and her love. Above all, we thank you for your gracious promise to all your servants, both living and departed, that we shall be made one again in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And gracious God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we give you thanks that you did receive Helen by baptism into the family of your church here on earth, and that you granted to her the gift of eternal life both here at the Cathedral Parish in Geraldton and through churches throughout this country. She ate with us the bread of life and drank from the cup of salvation. We thank you for all your goodness to Helen. In Christ our Saviour. Amen. We pray for those who mourn. God of all mercy, giver of all comfort, Look graciously, we pray, on those who mourn, especially for Chris, their children, Keith, Hilary, Dave and Janet, grandchildren, all to whom Helen had a special place in their hearts. We pray that casting all their cares on you, they may know the consolation of your love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We thank you, our Father, that your Son Jesus Christ came to die for us. We thank you that you raised him from the dead. We thank you for the gift of life and for the life of Helen. Bring us with Helen and all your faithful people to the fullness of life you promise to those who love you. We pray, Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. We confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Grant us, forgive us, and assure us of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <coughs> Strengthen us to love and obey you, that we may live the rest of our lives following your Son, the Lord Jesus, and be ready when you call us the fullness of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who mourn. We pray for those who cannot be here at this time. Be close to them in their loss. Increase their faith, our faith, in your undying love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray today for those who work in the area of motor neuron disease, who are working to help uh, find um, cures, to help find ways in which symptoms can be relieved. We pray that you will continue to guide them in their work. We pray, show mercy to the dying, sustain them with hope, fill them with the, present, with the peace and joy of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we praise you, Lord God, for your faithful servants in every age. We pray that we, with Helen, and with all who have died in the faith of Christ, may be brought to a joyful resurrection and the fulfilment of your eternal kingdom. You are Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who has given us the Lord's Prayer, which is on the middle of the page. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, so we are confident to pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom will be done. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you. It's been an uh, absolute joy to have Chris and Helen as part of our congregation here at 10 o'clock uh, Wednesday mornings for the last little while. And what the congregation members might not know is that Chris had given me a list of Helen's favourite hymns. So if I got to pick a hymn, I'd just pick it from that list and I would stand down there and I would look at Helen in her wheelchair and as we would sing those hymns, the smile on her face was so special to watch as she just exuded joy. She couldn't join in in voice, but she was there with us in spirit. And uh, so it is not a surprise to see seven hymns, Chris, on today's service. I was told this by Dave, I went, yes, of course she wanted seven hymns. It just brought her so much joy to be able to share God's love through song. And one of the hymns that we would have on Wednesday mornings when I got to pick is our next hymn. I invite you to stand as we sing before we have the Lord's Supper together. The great hymn, Be Thou My Vision. Would you please stand?
as they are saying, you are very welcome, uh, whatever your background, to, to uh, partake of the, the bread and, uh, and the wine, as we remember Jesus' body and blood given for us on the cross. Uh, if you would prefer uh, not to come forward and to sit quietly and reflect, that of course is, is, is fine. Uh, when, when, it, when it comes to I'm reading from the order of service. And I invite you to join me in, in this prayer of preparation, uh, humble access that uh, begins, we do not pursue. So, if you'd like to join me, we do, do not pursue. We do not pursue. We do not that cross down for you.
master man, my hope is there. He is my light, my strength, my song. Let us stand to see <laughs> Christ, 
who died and was buried and who rose again for us and who shall change our mortal body that it may be like his glorious body. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our sixth hymn, It is well with my soul.
uh, bringing the service to a close. Thank you. So, our final hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah, Pilgrim Through This Barren Land.